This video will discuss unitary transformations for transforming matrices into different basis sets. Okay, so let's imagine we have two sets of orthonormal basis vectors, which are complete in n dimensions. So we have basis vectors i, j, this type of set, though they are orthonormal, as we say, chronic or delta. This is equal to 1 when i equals j. They're normalized. It's equal to 0 when i is not equal to j. They are orthogonal. And we have our resolution of the identity operator from earlier in this chapter, where a sum over all of the elements of <clears throat> the ket, ket vector i times bra vector i acting on whatever it sees is basically equal to um, an identity operator, but it can transform us into the basis set of these basis vectors. And then we have basis set number two, which I represent as alpha and beta, where we have they form another orthonormal basis set and they have another resolution of the identity operator, which is an identity that transforms you into basis set two. Okay, so let's say we have <clears throat> alpha here. So alpha being some uh, basis vector from this set. And we say that alpha equals an identity operator acting on alpha, straightforward thus far. And that equals the re this resolution of the identity operator, sum from i equals 1 to n of ket i times bra ket i alpha, act the bra here acting on our ket. So this is equal to a sum from i equals 1 to n of this matrix element u i alpha. So this bracket i alpha we define as a matrix element. So we have, and then that times basis vector i. So what we're going to eventually see is that this matrix element comes from a unitary matrix. So we define unitary matrices earlier in this chapter, basically saying that a unitary matrix is defined as something whose adjoint is equal to its inverse. So a unitary matrix times its adjoint gives you an identity matrix. So we're defining this matrix, the elements of this matrix ui alpha as the bracket i alpha, which is the overlap of basis vectors i and alpha. So we know how to transform something from basis one to basis two or vice versa, because we know how each of the uh, basis vectors from these basis sets overlap through the elements of this unitary matrix. Okay, so that's if <clears throat> that's if we're going from uh, i to alpha. So we can define alpha in terms of this unitary matrix and the and the basis set i. What if we want to do the reverse? What if we want to define i in terms of uh, the transformation from alpha? So again, i is equal to an identity operator acting on itself, which is equal to a sum over all of the alphas of the resolution of the identity operator, which is equal to sum from alpha equals 1 to n of ui alpha star. So we've basically taken the complex conjugate of what we had before in order to get this there, because i alpha is the complex conjugate of alpha i, as we've seen from our previous videos on Dirac notation. So that's our complex conjugate. So that's equal to, once again, sum from alpha equals 1 to n of u alpha i, where now we've switched the indices, and this would be the adjoint of our original unitary matrix, which is acting on the basis vector alpha. Okay, so we know that uh, i and j, this bracket has to be the Kronecker delta because we know that i and j form an orthonormal set, as we said there. So this is equal to, we can stick a resolution of the identity operator in the middle of i and j. So split that bracket, put, make them two more brackets, sum over alpha. So this is equal to, according to our definitions that we've looked at up here, ui alpha, so that's ui alpha, and this is u dagger alpha j, so this is the adjoint, uh, this is alpha, 
alpha element alpha j in the adjoint of u. But if you'll notice here, this is just the definition of matrix multiplication of u and u dagger. We have u i alpha and then alpha j. The same index is in the middle where we have, for example, like a i k times b k j. It's the repeated index in the middle that gets summed over in our matrices. So what we end up happening is that this Kronecker delta is equal to the elements of our transformation matrix times its adjoint. And the Kronecker delta is the definition of an identity matrix in terms of its element. An identity matrix is 1 on the diagonal, where i equals j, and it's 0 otherwise. So this means that the product of our matrix times its adjoint is equal to an identity matrix, which means the adjoint is equal to its inverse, which means that this has to be a unitary matrix. So in order to transform from one basis set to another, we need to find a unitary matrix, and the elements of this unitary matrix are going to be the overlap of our basis vectors between the two sets. So we have n elements in this set, we have n elements in this set, and that gives us an n by n unitary matrix of all of these overlap elements. Okay, so we have, what if we have some operator here? We have some operator O acting on I, is, and we can use some uh, resolution of the identity here to figure out what's going on here. So we have resolution of the identity there, uh, adding in in terms of j. And then we know from our previous video that this is a matrix element. This is matrix element O, J, I in this representation of O in the basis set I. So we have this O acting on I as a sum over J of O, J, I acting on basis vector J. Similarly, we have in the basis set alpha, O acting on basis vector alpha as a sum over beta, so resolution of the identity in beta acting on this, sticking that in there in terms of beta. We have beta O alpha, which is just the, which is just the matrix element of O represented in basis set alpha, so we'll call this matrix uh, omega. So sort of just another, it's the Greek letter O, representation of uh, another matrix in another basis set. So now we have the same operator represented as a matrix in two different basis sets. We have the omega matrix and we have the O matrix. As I mentioned, O is a representation of the operator in basis set I. Omega is the representation of O in basis set alpha. Okay, so what are these elements in terms of one another? So we have omega alpha beta is equal to the matrix element alpha O beta, which we can stick in two resolutions of the identity here. So an identity there, identity there. And we'll get the sum over I and J of, we have a resolution of I and a resolution of J. So what we get here is we have matrix elements u alpha i, or u dagger alpha i, if we find the equivalent expressions over here. So we have u dagger alpha i, the adjoint. We have o i j. This is o, the matrix element of O expressed in basis set uh, i j. Then we have unitary matrix j beta. So we have this uh, expression there for that unitary matrix. So the same unitary matrix that converts alpha to i, but just elements j beta instead of element alpha i. And this, if you notice, is equivalent to the formula we would get if we did the following multiplication of three matrices. So this says that omega is equal to this unitary matrix adjoint u times matrix o times the unitary matrix again. So what we've effectively done here is we've taken the representation of O in basis set I, and we've applied the unitary transformation of the unitary matrix, which transforms our uh, the overlap of our basis vectors in the two different basis sets. 
we've got a unitary matrix which allows us to do unitary transformation of expressing this matrix in terms of basis set i to expressing it in the representation of basis set alpha. And then if you work through the math of this, we can see that because the adjoint equals the inverse, if we want to do the back transformation and get back to O, we can add a U over here, a U dagger over here. That would make a U, U dagger over here. Those cancel, as I have indicated down there. We have a uh, U dagger U over here, which cancels there, identity matrix on both sides, leaving just O. So if we want to get, if we want to do the back transformation and get from the representation in uh, alpha back to the representation in I, we can do the back unitary transformation to get there. So this unitary matrix really holds all the power in terms of representing anything in terms of one basis set or another. Because there might be a whole bunch of different operators that are relevant to whatever system we're setting, and we might want to express them in different kinds of basis sets. Uh, there are cases that come up where we have to transform into different basis sets of different basis vectors. And so these unitary transformations, finding what these unitary matrices are, really tell us lots of information and give us all the power to interconvert any any matrix we like into either representation of either basis set.